Hello, and thank you for watching The Righteous Kitchen, a cooking and baking blog found at www.therighteouskitchen.blogspot.com. Today I am going to make a vintage recipe for twin angel cake pies. Now that's a mouthful. This recipe is really great. It's old fashioned, it's very homey, but I like the fact that it uses uh, convenience items. Um, so this most of the work has been done at the store where you go and you purchase these pre-made angel food cakes. All right, so these are just the medium sized ones. Uh, they do have club sized ones that are bigger, but this is just the medium size. So go to your local Safeway or Vons and pick up two of these angel food cakes. But right now I'm gonna set those off to the side. This recipe, it will we'll, we'll tunnel out the angel food cake and then put a nice luscious fruit filling um, that's been whipped with heavy whipping cream. So it's gonna have a really luscious filling in the center. Now how we get that filling is, I have one 24 ounce bag of frozen raspberries. Now if you don't like raspberries, you can also get strawberries or blackberries, whatever you prefer. Now I've taken the time to de-seed these berries and what I have is just the uh, juice here with the pulp in there. So it's got some texture to it, but no seeds. You don't have to remove the seeds, but I do prefer that the seeds are removed. That being said, if you get the strawberries, don't bother removing the seeds from them. They're almost impossible. Now this recipe starts by thickening the fruit. And I'm gonna use gelatin to do that. And I'm just using Knox gelatin. So I have one cup of cold water and I'm gonna put in two envelopes of Knox gelatin. So there's one. Now this seems like a lot of gelatin, but keep in mind we are making two pies. So you wanna give this a stir. So we're gonna stir this well, really well. And then I just let it set for a second. Now these berries didn't come sweetened, so I am gonna put in one third of a cup of sugar. Gonna mix that very well. And to that, I'm gonna add four tablespoons. One teaspoon of lemon, lemon juice. juice. You can use fresh lemon or this bottled lemon juice works fine for this recipe. So just stir until all that sugar is dissolved. So back to the gelatin. I'm going to microwave this for about 30 seconds. And I'll come back in just a moment. Okay, uh, once it's been microwaved, give it a good stir. And you just wanna check to make sure that there's no granules left. You want all that gelatin to be completely dissolved. My microwave took 30 seconds. You might end up taking one minute. So what we're gonna do is just pour this into the fruit juice. And we wanna stir it very well.
So this goes in the refrigerator and I'm gonna go ahead and keep the whisk in there. So we want this to thicken, but we're gonna keep an eye on it as it thickens. We don't want it to solidify. Okay, that's gonna give us some time to go ahead and prep these um, angel food cakes. So we get a serrated knife. And then just release or go around here to release it around the middle and then around the exterior. All right. And then might have to struggle with it a little bit to get it out. get in there let me wash my hands real quick and I'll be right back. okay I am back and I have removed both of the angel food cakes from their package and I am just going to use a plate a normal cake plate for this but let me go ahead and show you what we need to do so I am just gonna go about a quarter of an inch down and try to keep it at that quarter of an inch and I just go around and take this top off. Okay. So, let me do something here. Now I will put the bottom on the cake plate and then I'll put the top on here because later on I'm going to need that. Okay. So there's one. Here's the second. And a quarter inch is fine. It still gives you enough structure to be able to hold it without it breaking on you. Okay. So there's our tops. So now what I'm going to do is come in here. And I'm going to cut around the circle. I'm going to leave a half an inch on each side. So just go around and use a serrated knife for this. Now don't cut all the way to the bottom. And then another, maybe do like three quarters of an inch on the exterior one. Okay, so use your fingers and just kind of tear this out. As you tear it out, you're going to fill up this hole in the center. You want to pack it in there really good. So what we're doing is creating a channel for that filling to
to go into. So you want to keep working. Of course, don't take it all the way to the bottom, but you're going to hollow it out quite a bit and make a shell. So go around and then you'll probably have some left over just put your scraps off to the side all right so here's one and this has been tunneled out The goal is to make this a nice area so we can get a lot of that filling in here. Okay, that looks good. So put this to the side. You could even do that. So there's one. Let me show you again on this other one so leave a good half an inch go around the center and then leave a good three quarters of an inch on the exterior because you still need this to be able to hold everything and not collapse and then just take your time and then start pulling these, this channel, press it down really good in the center hole. This is a refreshing dessert. Now we make this every year. My mother-in-law recently passed uh, just a few years ago and she made this for her husband, my father-in-law. And she said that she got the recipe from my father-in-law's aunt. Now she's a Southern lady from Texas. They all are. Um, my mother-in-law and then the aunt are from Texas. And this lady has been making uh, her nephew this cake here for his birthday. And then when my mother-in-law married, she continued that tradition on. And she made that every year that they were married which was almost 60 years. So that would correlate to this recipe being from the 50s. So, but it's a fun recipe. We have it every year for a New Year's, but it's a great recipe for like Mother's Day or Easter, a nice springtime recipe or even a summertime recipe because of the berries and that's why I say a lot of times depending on the year you might not have fresh berries and I found that those 
uh, frozen berries work great and they're a little bit more economical so here's that other one it's nice and shelled and I'm just gonna put the lid on it and clean up this board and I'll be um, back later to show you how that gelatin is doing hanging out in the fridge okay that gelatin mixture has been in the refrigerator for about an hour to an hour and a half and it's starting to thicken around the side so I'm just gonna break it up a little bit And do that now I am going to need this to thicken up a little bit quicker than what it is right now so putting this into a shallow pan will help me out okay what has happened is my daughter got wind that I'm making this and she's decided that she's coming over because she wants to make sure to get some. So we're just gonna, this just helps to speed up the process of getting that gelatin to thicken up. Right now it's just too runny. So I'm going to put it in this bowl and then come back in about a half an hour or so. But it looks beautiful. Nice, beautiful color. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes since I poured the gelatin mixture into a shallow bowl or pan here. And this is just what I'm looking for. See how quickly it set up? So at this point, just stir it like that. And this is gonna give you like the texture of if they were fresh berries and you had mashed them and they're just a little bit thick. So what I'm gonna do now is return these to the fridge and then I will need to get ready to whip the uh, whipping cream. So I'll be right back. Okay, I am at the mixer and I have one quart of heavy whipping cream and I want to just beat this with a wire whip uh, to get a stiff peak and I'm also going to beat in one half of a cup of granulated sugar Now remember, this is for two pies, so that's why we're using a quart. And then I may do some piping. I'm not sure if I'll pipe it or not. We'll see. Start out low so you don't get milk splashing in your face. And then you can gradually increase it and then pour your sugar in. So we're just going to kick this up high in just a second and then let it beat uh, in the mixer for two or three minutes until we get the nice stiff peaks. Okay, I've beaten these to stiff peaks and that's it, stiff. But you don't want to overbeat them where they turn waxy. Alright. So... Let me 
get things back into position. <clears throat> So here is our um, raspberries with the gelatin and you can just see it just keeps getting thicker and thicker. That's just what we want. And then we've got this big bowl of whipping cream. And I will say anytime you're whipping uh, whipping cream, a lot of recipes have a tendency to over sweeten the cream. Uh, this was one, one quart and I only used half a cup of sugar and it's plenty sweet enough. So I usually do two tablespoons of sugar per cup of heavy whipping cream. So now I'm just gonna go in here and I wanna say um, maybe half is what I'll, let me do this here, kind of get it. Maybe half is what I'll use for the fruit filling. But I'll put some in here and then I'll kind of mix it up and see. Let me get a spoon. You just fold this together. Nice and easy to mix in this shallow container. Might just put just a little bit more. Now again, I used uh, raspberries, but I think the recipe uh, originally just used mashed strawberries. Here we go. So this is what's gonna go into the tunnel of the angel food cake. So let me get a cake here. And we'll start that. Okay. So what we're gonna do is just carefully Spoon this mixture into the tunnel. Just take your time. And then go through there and make sure you, you're getting it all the way to the bottom. Because you want as much as this filling 
as it will hold. And I'm probably going to have some filling left over. See, we want it right up to the top there. Now you don't want it going spilling over because we're just going to move this out of the way. So we've got this on here and now is a good time if you have any crumbs on the plate just push them back towards the, the side of the um, cake. It's not really going to matter. This isn't one of those really fussy recipes. Okay, now carefully pick up that top piece and set it right there. So we have the center piece right here that we had stuffed with cake, but there's room for more filling. So here we go. And just try to keep it right there for right now. We'll just put it like We'll do it like that. Okay. So let me do the other cake and then I'll come back and see how I want, want to decorate these. Okay, I have both cakes filled and I have decided I'm just going to go ahead and brush the sides of this uh, plate and see if I could clean it up a little bit better than just pushing them to the side. Now this angel food cake is sticky and there are some crumbs stuck to the side, but I'll brush the majority of them away. Okay. This one had a lot of crumbs. Look at that. I think it's steps like this that, you know, go a long ways. That being said, this is a homey cake, but we don't want, you know, it looking just absolutely crummy. We want to look like we took a little bit of effort. Now I'm going to wet a paper towel and then I'm going to go around the edge of it and get some of that stickiness off where the crumbs were. 
Like I said, we're not worried about the presentation, but we do kind of want it clean. You know, a little bit clean. A deliberately home style. Okay, so there's one. This other one cleaned up. And I'm trying to think, do I really want to pipe this? My, my mother-in-law never did pipe the whipping cream on. So I'll probably not pipe it. Not every cake has to have a fancy piping. Okay, so everything is cleaned. And it's time to decorate. So let me get, and this, this was the filling that was left over. I'll put this in a smaller container. I might even use a little bit more on the top, but this here is great on its own, or sometimes I make it into a smoothie. So you've got options. Let me grab some fresh berries. Let's see here. Okay, I've got a package of fresh berries for decorating. And then I've got sweetened coconut. And I also have a banana. Now, usually when I'm putting the banana on, I'll wait right into the moment of serving because the banana tends to get browned. And I don't really, not one of those that really likes to put lemon juice on my bananas because you can taste that and it really doesn't last too long. But for demonstration purposes, I will go ahead and put a banana. So how this works is, it's a very simple decorating method here. All right. All we're going to do is put whipped cream and we can kind of just mound it up. Okay, we'll say that's one for right now. Now, just kind of, I like this billowy 
diner look. So there's one and here's two. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put a little more filling in the center. Just like that. Okay. Now, these are twin angel pies but they're never identical, unless you want them to be, of course. But there was always one pie that was decorated with the fruit. And you could, you know, just do it however you wanna do it. But it's just simple. Remember, this was from the 50s. Okay, so we have, I think that looks good. Maybe fit one more in here. I'm just trying to get as many as I can in here. Okay, so this would be the raspberry. So that's finished right there. And then the second one always had coconut and banana. So I'm gonna just put the coconut right on top of the whipped cream. Like that. Just put it right there. Nothing complicated. And then I am going to slice half of a banana. And I'll just go around that center mixture with the banana chunks. Because I really don't want to cover up the center. they can still be in there. Okay, so I just put the bananas um, just around that berry mixture. And that is it. So here you have it. Twin angel cake pies. Same filling, but they're not identical twins. This one has a raspberry topping, and then this one has a coconut and banana topping. So in a second, I'll bring the camera over and get you a close-up of that.